what's up everyone mr cameron here and in today's video we are going to be talking about hippo yes you heard me correctly hippo now i'm sure you're sitting there and you're thinking mr cameron i already know all about hippo well this is not the hippo i'm talking about no instead the hippo i'm talking about looks a little bit like this While the hippo that you see at the zoo might be great, the hippo that we're worried about is the acronym H-I-P-P-O. And this acronym will help us to understand any documents that we read this year in our American history class, whether they are older or newer. In fact, if you apply the hippo method to just about anything you read, you'll get a better understanding of what the author is trying to say, why the author is saying it, and who his message is intended for. So I think the best way for us to understand what hippo really means is to go ahead and hippo a document together. So follow along with me and hopefully by the end of this video it'll make a little bit more sense. So the document that I chose to hippo as an example is one that you should all be somewhat familiar with. You learned about it in seventh grade and it is the Federalist Papers that were written by Alexander Hamilton, James Madison, and John Jay. And for any of you that have Disney Plus, or might just be Hamilton fans in general, this should hopefully be familiar. So remember, as we go through the acronym, the H stands for historical context. The I stands for intended audience. P stands for purpose. P stands for point of view. And O is outside information. So we're going to apply all five of these to Alexander Hamilton's Federalist Papers. So historical context basically means what was going on when the document was written. Context is important because some of the things that we read might be from a long time ago. So if we know exactly what's going on either in America or in the world at the time, the document will make a lot more sense. The I is the intended audience. What person or group is the author trying to reach? Is there a particular political party he's trying to reach? A particular class of people he's trying to reach? Who is he or she trying to reach with their document? The first P stands for purpose. Why did the author create the source or document in the first place? What is their purpose? The second P is point of view. Who is the author? How does their background? How does their gender? How does their race, how does their political party impact their point of view? All of these things need to be taken into account when you're looking at old documents and really even at new documents. And lastly is outside information. Is there anything that we can find, any outside information that we can then connect to the document? Are other people writing similar things? Are other people writing maybe the complete opposite? We can use that outside information to gain a better understanding of what we're trying to study. So let's take a look at the Federalist Papers and apply Hippo to it. Historical context. What was going on when the document was written? Well, for those of you that are fans of Hamilton the Musical, or just remember from last year, in 1787 and 1788, when the Federalist Papers were being written, there was a fierce debate over whether or not to ratify the U.S. Constitution. Many people felt that the Constitution gave the U.S. government way too much power. So Alexander Hamilton started writing a series of essays, anonymously published, defending the Constitution and trying to convince people to ratify it. Next is I. Who was Hamilton's intended audience? Who was he trying to reach? Well, Hamilton is trying to reach citizens that might be skeptical of a strong central government. He's writing the Federalist Papers to support the Constitution. He knew that the Articles of Confederation were not working, but he also knew that many citizens were skeptical of the Constitution because they felt that it gave the government too much power, and a government with too much power smelled an awful lot like a king. Purpose. Why did the author create the source or document? Well, Hamilton, Madison, and Jay urged New Yorkers to support the Constitution. They knew that the Constitution would not be put into effect unless they got 
a specific number of states to ratify. And Hamilton in particular was trying to reach New Yorkers to convince them that the Constitution was the best form of government for the newly formed country. Point of view. Who is the author? How does their background impact their point of view? Well, Hamilton, who is the main author, he wanted a strong national government. He felt that a strong national government was the only way to join all of the newly formed states together. He knew that if the states continued to operate under the Articles of Confederation, the United States would be weak, they wouldn't be united, and he felt that by joining them all together under one constitution, that would be their best chance of success. Hamilton, of course, would later go on to found the Federalist Party, which advocated a strong government against Thomas Jefferson's Democratic Republicans, who wanted stronger state governments. And then lastly, we have outside information. What outside information can we find to connect to the Federalist Papers? Well, first we can look at the Articles of Confederation, which was the first government that we created after the Revolutionary War. Next, we can look at the U.S. Constitution itself. The Federalist Papers support the Constitution. They're defending the Constitution to the people of the United States. So if we look at the Constitution, we can see exactly what Hamilton is trying to defend. And lastly, we can look at the Anti-Federalist Papers. Not everybody wanted the U.S. Constitution. Anti-Federalists came out and they published their own essays saying why a strong central government was not going to work and why it could be dangerous. So, throughout the year, we're going to be using Hippo to analyze documents. It's important to read like a historian. It's important to remember the historical context of a document, the intended audience, the point of view, the purpose, and any outside information that we can gather to better understand the document. I know this video packed a lot of information into a short amount of time, but my hope is to continue to revisit this method throughout the year to gain a better understanding of some of the things that we're studying. But if we apply the HIPPO method to any old documents, or really any new documents, in the long run, it'll give us a better understanding of what the author's trying to say and why they're trying to say it. This video is also going to be up for you to reference at any point in the future if you're not sure. So at any point in time when we're talking about hippoing a document, be sure to refer back to this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button, and I look forward to seeing you all in class in the days and weeks ahead. Thanks. <music>